In 1985, Dublin, 15-year-old Connor Lohler lives with his parents and two elder siblings. He comes from a dysfunctional home where his parents are always fighting, but Connor seems pretty used to it. One day, Connor's parents sit their children together and inform them of their financial crisis. Since Connor's elder brother, Brendan, ungraciously dropped out of college, the only way the parents think they can save money is by transferring Connor to a different school that will not be so expensive. Connor finds out that he is being sent to a Christian brother's school named Sin Street and he isn't exactly pleased by his parents' decision. But there's not much he can do about it. Though his father insists that this school is just as highly reputable as Connor's current institution, Brendan makes Connor wary by opposing his views and calling out the Christian brother's institution as vile and simply horrible. Connor arrives at his new school and observes his surroundings warily. Everyone seems out of control and the school seems to be lacking in discipline of any kind. Boys fight ruthlessly out in the open as the principal simply watches from afar, unbothered and unwilling to interfere. Even the classrooms lack decorum and the teacher seems to not care at all as he day drinks inside the class. The principal, Brother Baxter, introduces himself to Connor and informs him about the strict policy of the school which requires students to only wear black shoes. Since Connor is wearing brown ones, he suggests that he buys them soon. The rest of the day passes by, and during recess, Connor is approached by a student. The student takes Connor inside the washroom, offering him a cigarette, but then he bullies him. He threatens to hit him with the catapult if Connor won't dance. In the end, because Connor refuses to be bullied for no reason, the boy punches him and it gives him a black eye. Later at home, he spends time with his family, watching TV, and Brendan shows them the latest Duran Duran video. Connor soaks up all the information Brendan gives them, and his interest in music peaks a little more. The next morning when Connor arrives at the school, he's stopped by Brother Baxter for not wearing black shoes. Even after Connor tells him that his family can't afford to buy another pair, Brother Baxter makes him leave his shoes in his room and asks him to collect them after school. Connor spends his day walking barefoot around the school and when he gets to the cafeteria, he gets bullied once again and all the other boys make fun of him. Connor is then introduced to Darren who befriends him and tells him about the big bully. Connor finds out that his name is Barry Bray and he has marked Connor as his target for this school year because he showed signs of weakness. Darren hands Connor his card, offering to help him find a solution to avoid the bully. But when he spots a pretty girl outside school, he can't help but be drawn to her. Despite Darren warning him that she does not speak to anyone and that her boyfriend's a dealer, Connor approaches the girl. While talking to her, he finds out that she is a model and will be going to London soon. To get her attention, Connor asks her if she wants to be in a music video for his band. At first, the girl has a hard time believing him, and when he asks for her digits, she asks him to sing a song. Connor sings a few words, enough to convince her, and the girl agrees to be in the video and gives him her number. Connor returns to Darren with the task of forming a band urgently. Darren takes Connor to Eamon's house and tells him about the band. Eamon can play every instrument with ease, and thanks to his dad, who is in a covers band, he has all the instruments at his home. Connor tells Eamon that he sings and writes songs, and his approach to music is more futuristic than nostalgic. Eamon agrees to be in his band and establishes that he will play the guitar and help write songs. He also agrees to let the boys practice at his place, and Darren appoints himself as the manager. They then go in search of other band members, and Darren brings them to Ingjig's house and they recruit the boy. They get their drummer and bassist through the flyer they put up at school, and then the band is complete. Eamon names the band Sing Street, and the boys are good to go. They record a cover song and Connor plays it to his brother, who instantly dislikes it. He does not think Connor can get a girl by playing someone else's music. He needs to make his own art because rock and roll is a risk. Brendan will not allow his brother's band to be just a covers band since he does not see any appeal in playing music made by someone else. Instead, he teaches Connor how to write songs. The next day, Connor and Eamon create a song together, The Riddle of the Model. Connor gets the band together and puts their music in on a tape before giving it to the model. He gives her the time and place of where to be for the music video shoot, and the girl tells him that she will try to make it. When she finds out the name of the song, she feels flattered, thinking that Connor wrote it for her. But the boy lies and plays it cool, telling her that he wrote it for some other model he knows. On the day of the shoot, the band is waiting at the location, dressed in bizarre outfits. When the model, Rafina, arrives, she is aghast to see the way the boys are dressed. She tells Connor that the only reason she came there was because she really liked his song. She takes it upon herself to do the makeup for the band despite the boys' protests. And then they record the song. After the recording, Connor drops Rafina home on his bike. They get talking, and Connor tells her about his parents probably splitting up. Rafina sympathizes with him. She's glad she doesn't have parents so she doesn't have to deal with such stuff. Connor wants to ask more about that, but Rafina realizes he's been taking her in circles around the same squalor. He finally brings her back home and is about to make a move when a grown man rolls up in his car, calling Rafina to come along. 
Rafina introduces him as Evan, and after a quick chat, she kisses Connor goodbye on the cheek and leaves with the man. Connor watches her go disappointedly and then reads the plate outside her house, which says, Kerwin home for girls. When Brendan sees the video, he is pretty impressed by Connor and especially by Rafina in the video. He wonders if Connor has kissed the girl yet. Connor tells him about Rafina's boyfriend and does not think he has a chance with her. Brendan gives him some of his records to study and make more music. Meanwhile, they hear their parents fighting outside, and Brendan thinks their mother is having an affair with someone. When he goes off to sleep, Connor goes to Eamon's house, and they stay up late, writing a new song and making music. Soon, they record the song with the whole band, and then Connor gives the tape to Rafina, who is brought to tears when she listens to the song, because she can feel it is written for her. When Connor shows up to the school in makeup, and with new highlights in his hair, Brother Baxter does not appreciate it. Connor gets called to his office and is told to remove the makeup he's wearing. When Connor tries to tell him that it is for the school band, Brother Baxter reprimands him, crudely stating that men don't wear makeup. When Connor tries to make him understand, the man gets furious and forcefully makes Connor wash off his makeup in a brutal manner. He leaves the boy crying on the bathroom floor. When school ends, Rafina is waiting for Connor at the school gate. She calls him Cosmo because he needs a catchy name since he is in a band now. She can sense something is wrong with Connor, but he doesn't say much. They walk together, and Rafina tells him that she liked his song and it made her cry. Connor asks her what her deal is with Evan, and Rafina says that they have been on and off for a long time. Right now, they are on a break. She tells him that Evan will soon take her to London and help her pursue her modeling career. Connor wonders what good will it do Evan to help her, and Rafina realizes that Connor might just be a little jealous, but he outright denies her accusation. She then asks him if he would write her a happy song sometime, since she could really use a laugh. Connor wonders, what if he is not feeling happy to write a song like that? That's when Rafina tells him that his problem is that he is not happy being sad. But that's all what love is about, happy sad. She realizes it is almost dinner time, and she rushes to return. Connor asks her about the house, and she tells him that it is a nice house, nicer than the other places she's lived in. He wonders about her parents, and Rafina tells him that her father was an alcoholic and passed away a few years ago. Her mother is manic depressive, and so she is always in and out of the hospital. Rafina hugs him goodbye and tells him to call her, if he needs her for more videos before she leaves for London though she does not tell him when she will be leaving. Connor talks about his conversation with Rafina to Brendan and asks him what she meant by happy sad. Brendan thinks Rafina is more mature for her age, and seeing her family history, she most definitely will have daddy issues. He warns Connor against girls like that and asks if he is up to the task of handling it. Connor can't say, but he thinks Rafina is an amazing human being. He has never seen anyone like her, and he has intense feelings for her. Brendan recommends him music by The Cure that matches the happy sad vibe. The next day, Connor shows up at school, and his whole vibe is changed. He tells the band that they are no longer a pop band, and their vibe will now be happy sad. The boys are confused about what that exactly means, and Connor explains that it is all about accepting their now and living in the present, to get on with life anyway. For their next song video, the band travels to the harbor, and Rafina is tasked to pretend as if she's jumping into the water for effect. But when they start shooting, Rafina decides to really jump into the water, and when Connor goes to rescue her, he finds out she can't swim. He pulls her up and asks her why she jumped when she cannot swim. Rafina did it for their art because nothing can be done by just giving your half to it. Her words affect Connor in a way that he can't help but kiss her. It takes her by surprise, but she is happy about it. He starts to apologize for it, but Rafina stops him, saying it was great. But the moment is ruined when he brings up Evan. Later, Connor tells Rafina more about his brother and family. Rafina wonders how strange parental love is when she thinks about her father, and how he would never let her go anywhere because he loved her too much. She thinks her mother was much better off being in a mental institution. On the way back, Connor seems to fall more deeply for her. Back home, Brendan talks to Connor about their parents' unhappy lives. Each time Connor is introduced to new music, the band's vibe changes. His confidence has improved so much that when Barry Bray tries to bully him in front of the whole school, Connor stands up to him without breaking a sweat and embarrasses the boy. The boys see a notice on the board about the end of school dance and Connor wants the band to play because it will be their first real gig. Eamon thinks they should be focusing on preparing for the exams and not practicing for the show, but when he finds out that there will be girls at the dance, he instantly agrees. Connor is trying to write a song late at night when he hears his parents fighting. Outside the room, his sister and he watch their dad accuse their mother of infidelity, as they both argue. The three siblings decide to play loud music to drown out the fighting noises. Connor creates a new song with the band. Days come and go, and the boys get done with the midterm exams. After the exams, Connor visits Rafina and takes her out on an adventure. They go out to the harbor, and he takes her out on his late grandpa's boat. He often takes the boat out for a spin without his parents' knowledge. They have a picnic under the sun, and Connor tells her about his vision for the new music video, in which the setting is an American school prom. 
As they get talking about it, Connor and Rafina feel more and more drawn to each other. On the way back, Connor can't stop smiling. Rafina asks him when they are shooting the new video, and he tells her that it is next weekend, she seems to be sad about that. One day, Connor's parents get the family together because they have some news to share with them. They announce that they are getting a divorce. Brendan, who is already expecting it, is relieved that they finally decided to split up. He is headed to pack his bags when his father sits him down and asks him to listen to what the parents have come up with. He then tells them their mother is going to move in with her lover and he is going to sell the house and shift into an apartment. The kids will split their time living with both parents. But Brendan strictly establishes that he will not live with her mother's lover, and even Connor can't deal with this. Later, when he and Brendan get talking, Connor wishes that his parents could come to his first gig. Brendan can't help but scoff at his naiveness. He shares with him his years-long trauma of being the first child of their parents. He gets upset and angry at how his life has turned out, and his outburst makes Connor wary and scared. On the day of the music video filming, Connor waits for Rafina to show up, but she never does, and he has to start without her. However, he keeps one eye on the door, and then he imagines Rafina entering the gymnasium, wearing a beautiful white dress. Soon, Connor visualizes the video playing out exactly how he wanted it to, and for a moment, he gets all he wished for. His parents are present at the gig, everyone is dancing like in an American prom and enjoying themselves, and he gets to dance with Rafina. But as the song ends, Connor's fantasy also ends, and he is brought back to the present. After the performance, Connor goes to Rafina's house, and there, he finds out that she has left for London without telling him. She left with Evan and left no message for Connor. This leaves him heartbroken and disappointed for days, until one day, he sees her outside her house. Connor approaches her happily, but Rafina tries to act like she does not know him. She pretends to be Rafina's sister for some reason, but Connor does not buy her act. Rafina eventually drops the pretense, and they get away to talk. Then he discovers that Rafina was betrayed by Evan and he had lied to her about everything he had promised her earlier. She never made it to London and feels ashamed to be back with nothing. Not only that, but he finds out that Evan was also abusive to her, and seeing her like that breaks Connor's heart. Rafina can't believe what her life has become. She'll probably end up working at a McDonald's and will keep hanging out with a 15-year-old schoolboy. She scoffs at her fate, but her words hurt Connor deeply. He abruptly leaves from there. He decides to write a song for her yet again and seeks Eamon's help for it. He talks to Eamon about Rafina and about her dream to get to London, and Eamon suggests Connor be the man who takes her. He tells him to go to London and get the band a record deal and then take the rest of them out of Dublin too. As days pass, Connor makes the new song and leaves the tape with Rafina. He makes peace with his brother, and when an idea strikes him, he gets Darren to make 200 photocopies of Brother Baxter's picture. He later heads to Barry's place with Darren, and there, Darren puts Barry in his place, by telling him that all he will ever be is his addict parents' lackey, while Connor and he will be part of a band, go on tour, and have an enriched life. To get Barry out of this bind and to fulfill their purpose, Darren asks him to join them as a roadie for their band. Just like that, he gets Barry on board. Sing Street performs at the school dance, and they win over the crowd in just one song. But as Connor proceeds to sing a slow song, the band loses much of the crowd. He wrote the song for Rafina, and as Rafina listens to it, alone in the park, she is brought to tears. Next, Connor announces that he is going to sing a song dedicated to Brother Baxter, who is absolutely against this. He tries to shut the show down and threatens Connor to get off the stage if he still wants this band to exist next semester. But Connor and the boys decide to give this last song their all. He sings the song Trashing Brother Baxter, and the crowd enjoys it to the fullest. Connor throws the masks he made from Brother Baxter's picture into the crowd, and everyone puts it on as they vibe to his music. Rafina shows up at the dance and is so happy to see the way the band is performing. When the performance ends on a successful note, Connor and Rafina sneak back into his house, and Connor introduces her to his brother. He asks Brendan for his help to drive them to the harbor because they have plans to sail to England that night. Brendan's not entirely surprised but amused. He asks if they have any money or any contacts in England. But all they have is Rafina's portfolio and Connor's songs on tape. Inspired by their drive, Brendan agrees to give them a lift. Connor packs his stuff and quietly gets the car keys from his parents' room. He whispers them goodbye as they sleep and then leaves home. Brendan drives them to the harbor, and they get ready to leave. Just before he leaves, Brendan hands Connor a song that he wrote and asks him to make music out of it. Brendan only wishes that he had the courage to do what Connor's doing. Rafina invites Brendan to visit them someday and he assures her he will. In turn, he asks her to look after his brother, and Rafina fondly hugs him goodbye. Brendan gets emotional and hugs Connor long and tight. Though he's sad to see his brother go, Brendan feels proud and so very happy for Connor to have finally escaped this town, and this life that had trapped them. He will sail away with the girl he loves, to follow their dreams together.